If you're looking for the best ways to market and promote your music this year and get it in front of as many people as possible, along with making as much money as possible from your music releases and building a huge fan base from it, then this podcast episode is for you. We are going to be talking about music marketing in 2023. And I wanna jump right into this and start by talking about the three biggest mistakes that musicians make when marketing their music. And one of the biggest mistakes that musicians make when they're trying to market and promote their music is they neglect to build a strong online presence. Here's the thing, your online presence is a community of dedicated fans and people who have shown that they want to be a part of what you do. And when you have dedicated fans, it's much easier to market and promote your music because you don't have to do a lot of hard work to go out and get people who have never seen you before, never heard what you do, and then go through the process of convincing them that what you do is good enough, you know, for them to hear and ultimately from the, for them to buy and give you their money, time and resources for. So the way you want to do this is you want to start engaging with your social media followers and fans that you have on there. And some of the ways that you could do that is doing things like virtual concerts, things like that, where you can build a community around what you do. Now, I want to say that one thing that's really important about this is that it's not about the numbers. I know we live in this society where everybody is trying to get you know, a million followers, a million subscribers, a million fans and all of that, right? Although those metrics are great and they can be good and they can work. What's more important is that you have a community of dedicated fans and dedicated people who have sort of signed up to support you. So it's like if you have a million followers And then you only have like a thousand of those followers that are engaged with what you do, what you do and really interested in what you do. Then like, what's the use of having the, you know, the million followers versus let's say if you have only 5,000 followers on one of your social media platforms and you have like three or 4,000 of them who are like really engaged and they're interested in what you do and they buy what you put out when when you put out music when you release music they're interested in it already they have a built-in interest that's always going to be better than having like the million followers with no engagement and all of this is to say that you need to have an online community an online presence where you have this sort of engagement with your fans and you can have a back and forth with them so that you build that trust with them and they have trust with you. So they're willing to give you their time, their money, their resources. When you put out a project, they'll buy it from you. When you have a concert online or in person, they'll show up to it. When you put out some merch, a t-shirt, you know, some whatever that you have that's merchandise for your product or your brand or your band and all of that, they'll buy it. They'll, you know, just buy it because it's you because they already have a built in trust with you. So this is one of the biggest mistakes that musicians make. They neglect the online presence. And the next mistake that musicians make when they're trying to market their music is failing to define a target audience. And this is a really big one. So the thing is your music is going to resonate with some people more than it's going to resonate with other people. And that's just the way things are. You know, you're like that as well. You have music that you like and you have music that you don't like. You have artists that you like a little bit more than you like, you know, other artists. Right. So that's just the way it is. So you have to understand that. And the thing is, having a target audience of the people who your music resonates with the most That's going to be the easiest way to market your music because it's already a built in thing where it's going to resonate with them. Right. So you want to develop your marketing for the people that resonate with it. So the resonate with people, that's why I have that in quotes right there. So the people who resonate with your music, you want to develop your music marketing around those people because that that's going to 10 X your chances of success It's going to 10 X your chances of them again, buying your music, signing up for what you do, following you on social media, becoming a part of your social, 
media community, your online presence, like what we just talked about, it's going to 10x chances of them doing that. So the way that you want to do this is you want to think about who your music is for and develop strategies and a plan to get your music in front of them. That's what marketing is about. And the reason that this is a big mistake is because what most musicians do is they try to go out and, you know, use these marketing principles of like big Fortune 500 companies and stuff like that. And that's great. Actually, a lot of that stuff works. But when you don't have a target audience, when you don't sort of niche down your marketing to make it specific for specific people, then it makes it a whole lot harder. It's like fishing. If you know anything about fishing, like certain types of fish prefer certain types of bait. So you want to put the bait on your hook when you're fishing for the fish that you're trying to catch. So if you're using some sort of different bait, you're going to, you know, be trying to get a different type of fish. What you want to be doing is making your bait, your marketing specific to the fish, to the people that you're trying to get your music in front of. And again, the way that you do that is you just, you figure out what people like. You use your social media when people are responding to your comments, when they're in your DMs, when people like your posts, it's giving you feedback on what they like and what they prefer from you. And it's giving you feedback on the type of people that you're going to be marketing to. And so you want to develop your, all of your marketing, or at least most of your marketing around those type of people, right? You find out their interests, their needs, their likes, their desires, and you develop a plan to get your music in front of them and package it in a way that packages those desires that they have. So you see how that works? So again, this is one of the biggest mistakes that musicians make. They don't have a target audience and they don't target their marketing. Are you a musician, artist, or band looking to make some serious passive income and build a huge fan base? Then you should absolutely start a YouTube channel today. And that's because right now YouTube is the biggest opportunity for bands and musicians to make money and build a huge following around their craft. And this is the reason that the premier YouTube quick start course for musicians was created. This course is designed to get you up and running on YouTube very quickly and easily. And the best part is it's completely free and you can get instant access to it at the link in the description of this video. Now, the third biggest mistake that musicians make when they're trying to market their music is they have a lack of consistent and cohesive brand. So the thing about your brand is that it's not just about your music. Your brand is not just encapsulated by the music that you play or perform or that you put out. It's basically your overall image and message and everything that that's about you that people are getting from you when you present yourself, when you perform, when you put out music, that is your image. It's encapsulated by many, many things. And what happens is an inconsistent image makes it really difficult for fans to connect with you and your music on any sort of deeper level. So when you have these inconsistencies in your messaging and the way that you look, the things that you present, the things that even that you say, the type of music that you do when it's inconsistent, it makes it more difficult for people to connect with you, right? And to get on board with what you're doing. So what you want to be doing is creating a steady image of, you know, things like your visuals and your messaging that supplement you as an artist. So the things that you're putting out, all of the things that we just talked about, you, it includes your music. It's not just your music, but it does include your music. So if you use this example of any sort of signed artists, like your favorite artists, whether or not it's, you know, like a Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Lizzo, whomever, you can probably describe their image really easily because they have a consistent image. So Beyonce or Taylor Swift, pop singer that does this sort of pop, you know, new school pop style music, you can define them really easily. Now, just think about if somebody like a Taylor Swift came out and start doing, <laughs> I don't know, classical jazz music or something like that. It'll make it hard for people to get on board with what she's doing because her image that she's putting out is inconsistent. One day she's a pop artist and she's dressing, you know, modern with all of this 
blingy stuff on and all of that kind of stuff right and then you know you see her a month later and you know she has on a, a gown and singing in a jazz club singing classical jazz or something with like that right it makes it a little bit harder it's not that you can't do that and you know there's an argument that says that you can actually do all of those things and make a cohesive message and a cohesive me- image out of all of that it's just that's not usually the case that that's what most of us are doing most of us have at least at least with the type of music that we do, it has some sort of consistency in it. Like we're either rock artists, pop artists, jazz, R&B, you know, hip hop, whatever that kind of thing is. And you want to create a consistent image around that because the more consistent and the more cohesive and the more steady your image is, it makes it easier for people to get on board with what you're doing. And that's what you ultimately want. You want them on board. So again, they can give you their time, their money, their resources, their follows on social media. You want them to sign up for your email list so you can talk to them on a regular basis. You want them to show up for your concerts. And this is what having a cohesive image is going to do. And it's one of the biggest mistakes that, you know, a lot of musicians when they're marketing, they fail to do. And so from there, let's get into the three pillars of music marketing. And these three pillars are going to be the foundation of all of your marketing efforts. And when you don't have them, you're going to neglect getting a lot of success and a lot of progress done with your marketing. But when you're able to incorporate these things and do them effectively, you are, as I said earlier, again, going to 10 X your chances of your marketing being successful. You're going to get people on board with you. You're going to get people asking you about your music. You're going to get more followers on social media when you have these three things in place. And the first pillar of music marketing is the long term process. And this process includes really three big sections. And those sections are the pre-release So everything that you're going to be doing before you release your music going up to that release date and then the actual release date, like the time that you're start selling your music and you have your open card and all of that kind of stuff where people can go buy it. And then after that period of where you've that has all kind of died down and you have a post release and that is going to be the section where you kind of debrief and then you keep marketing as well. So these are the three sections of the long term process. And what happens is focusing on all three of these sections of the long term process is going to give you the ability to gain more money and grow a larger fan base. And this is, again, one of these things that a lot of musicians neglect to do. They usually concentrate a lot on the pre-release or at least concentrate the most on the pre-release. And then the other three sections or the other two sections in the three sort of get neglected. You know, some people do some things in those sections. We'll talk a little bit about some of the things that's in those sections, but having all three of these again is what's going to give you the biggest chances for success. So what this really means is that you want to continue promoting and marketing after that sort of honeymoon phase. And what do I mean by that? Well, that honeymoon phase is that sort of excitement that you have going right into the release and you've built up a little momentum. You've talked about your release coming up on social media and all of that kind of stuff. And you gotten some people on board, you're hype about it, about yourself, but then you release the music, you get whatever sort of success you're going to get from it. And then like most musicians from there just tend to forget about it. They'll either start moving on to something else or, you know, be disappointed about the results they got from this release. So they take some time off and all of that kind of stuff. Right. And that is one of the biggest mistakes that musicians make because you want to keep promoting in that post release phase. You want to keep your music going and you want to keep your stuff in front of people. One of the things that you have to understand is that in the society that we live in, people are busy. There's a lot of things that sort of get our attention and is jockeying for our attention, ads, social media, people's minds are taken up with a lot of stuff. So really what that means is out of sight, out of mind. And what happens is if you release your music and then the day of, or the the week of you talk about it, and then you stop talking about it from there and stop promoting, a, promoting your music, people are going to forget about it. It's just the way things work now. So you have to keep this long-term process in mind. You have to long-term this. 
you have to develop a a process of when you're getting ready to release music, even if it's just a single or an EP or an album or whatever, whatever you're releasing, you want to extend that out and put it in these three phrases, everything that you're going to be doing in the pre-release, gaining momentum, telling people about it, getting people to promote with you and all of that kind of stuff. But into that post release, you want to be doing those things as well. You want to keep some momentum going with the things that you're doing. And again, this is going to greaten your chances of making more money, getting more attention, getting your music out there and building a huge, a larger fan base and all of that. So this is pillar number one. Now, pillar number two is the team up. And this is a really big one. So here's the thing. When you want to release some music and you want to earn a lot of money from that music and you want to develop a huge following from it and you want that music to get in front of as many people as possible, you should be collaborating and teaming up with other people. That's just the way it works. It works a whole lot better because when you do this, you'll avoid boring music releases and you know, you'll avoid that situation where you don't gain anything from your music releases because that happens to a lot of musicians. And this is why a lot of musicians get discouraged. You know, again, they'll get to that release process or release day and they don't make as much money and don't get as much attention as they think. And then they get discouraged and, you know, <laughs> probably don't even release any more music for a while because they were discouraged from that release. Whereas if you have something like this pillar in place, a team up, it's again going to greaten your chances on all of those areas, the amount of money that you can make, the amount of social media followers that you have, the bigger community you can build, the more your music is going to be out there in front of more people. So one of the ways that you do this during the release is that you reach out to your friends and others who are willing to help you. And in business, you know, areas, what this is called is a joint venture. You collaborate with someone else or a group of someone else's and you collaborate on resources. And when you put those resources together, it's a win-win situation for everybody. So as an example, let's say you have a friend or let's say you first, you have, I don't know, let's say a thousand followers on Instagram and you're going to use Instagram to start promoting your music. Well, you have a couple of friends or, you know, two or three friends, or even just one, you have one friend that has 1500 followers. You have another one that has a thousand. You have another one that has 3000, right? So what you're going to do is, collaborate with those people, have them also help you promote and market your music. You want to include them in that process. So get your friend to, when you're making posts about, um, Hey, my album is coming out on this date of, you know, whatever year and whatever time you'll be able to get it here. Those posts have your social media friends do a post about it as well, or share your post. And that way you're combining resources so they can add something to it. Like, Hey, my friend, such and such is releasing a, a CD or a single on this date. If you love music and this works well, especially if you have friends that kind of do some of the same things that you do, like they're a musician or something as well, but they can say that, Hey, if you like my music, you'll definitely love his music as well. So I'm, you know, I'm putting this out here. So you guys will, will know about this. You have two or three friends to do that. Now, guess what? Your thousand followers, they're 1500, they're 2000, they're 3000. You put all of that together. You have a much larger number of people to promote to. And again, this is, this is like business 101. people who are successful in business. They know this stuff. They use this stuff like every day because they know the com the combining of resources is going to make everything better for everybody. Now I will say that when you're making these team ups in, you know, joint ventures, I did mention that it should be like a win-win situation. So you don't want to always be asking for something from even your friends. You want to, you know, have it a win, be a win-win situation. So let them know, Hey, at the very least, when you put out something as well, I'm going to promote your stuff as well. When you get ready to do this, or if you have something you want me to share and promote, I'll do that for you for, you know, in return for you doing this for me, right? That's the win-win situation. And you can have those, the whole thing, the long-term process, the first pillar, these collaborations and team ups can be long-term. So when you get ready to release your third album, your fifth single or whatever, you still have all of these combined resources, right? You see how this works? This is a really, really important pillar of successful music marketing. You need to be employing teamwork 
in your marketing processes, the team up, the collaboration, the joint ventures, so that you share resources with other people that, you know, stand to gain something out of promoting your music that you can help them and they can help you. So this is the second pillar of music marketing. And that brings us to the next big pillar of music marketing, and that is the money investment. So here's the thing, and I know this may rub some people the wrong way, but it's just a fact of the matter that the most successful marketing strategies and marketing plans and music releases have money invested in the marketing. That's just the way it is. There's, you know, money is powerful and it makes a lot of things easier. So when you invest in your music release, it's a lot easier to do things like get the collaborations, the team ups, like what we were talking about and make things long term in the other pillar as well. And it makes the overall process of marketing and getting your music in front of people a whole lot easier. So what you want to do with your marketing is you want to put a budget together for your release marketing. Now, here's the thing. I know why I said this will rub some people the wrong way, not like in a like really bad negative way. But I think what people understand is that a lot of ways that we market stuff now is free, like social media, posting something on social media when you have a certain number of followers, even if you only have two or three hundred people, that's like free marketing. So there's a lot of arguments that are made that says, you know, hey, just do this. It's free. You don't have to do this. You don't have to put money into it and all of that. Right. Well, here's the thing. As I mentioned earlier, all of our attention and all of our time as human beings now are being is being taken up by a lot of things. It's being, you know, subverted by other things and our it's being pulled by a lot of ads and everybody wants to put their music out and everybody wants to market. So you have this thing of social media, these free areas, which are absolutely great. This is not some, saying something against those because I'm saying you should use these in combination. But you have all of this free stuff down there. And because people realize it's free, it's a crowded area. So you have the most people in those areas that are like social media trying to everybody's posting something about themselves. Hey, check me out. Check out my stuff. Buy my stuff. Meet me here. Come to this concert. Do all of this. People are doing all of that in these free areas and they should be. That's great. But when you're able to take that to a new level and usually this new level that I'm talking about requires some money and monetary investment. I'm not really talking about how much right now, but at least some monetary investment where you can do stuff like ads or not even like ads where you can do stuff like pay collaborators to help promote your stuff. That opens up a lot more doors for the things that you're able to do and get in front of your marketing. So, or get your marketing and marketing your music in front of other people. So for example, I mentioned, you know, the, in the team up pillar, where you have friends and stuff like this, where you collaborate with, well, that's great. But what happens if, if you don't have any friends that are willing to do that, or, you know, the friends that you have, they just don't do social media like that or whatever. Right. And you need to still collaborate with somebody. But the only way that you can do that is some, you know, especially for somebody who has much higher resources than you, like, you know, they have a hundred thousand followers on YouTube or Instagram or something like that. If you use Instagram, and you only have like 500 and you want them to promote your stuff, the best way to set up that collaboration with them is to offer some money for it, or at least some resources that's going to be worth their time. People who have built their stuff up to those levels, you know, have put in the work. And, you know, if you want to collaborate with them, the thing about it is you're going to be getting more from them by using all of their resources of 100,000, 200,000, a million followers only to your 500, you're gonna be getting more from them than they're getting from you. And most collaborators in that position are not going to be willing to do that, again, unless you put up a little dough. Now, <laughs> it's just the way it is. Now, here's the good news about this. For the most part, we're not talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're not even talking about thousands and thousands of dollars, right? A lot of this stuff could be done, it's still, very inexpensively, even to with your friends, offering them, you know, 50 bucks or something like that, or a hundred bucks to, you know, do your promotional strategy with you for say six weeks during your pre-release. And then, you know, paying somebody else a hundred bucks to do it 
for the next two months or something or the next 30 days during the post release strategy or during the release strategy. Right. So we're not necessarily talking about really expensive, you know, prices and stuff like that, that you need to invest in your marketing. But this money investment in your marketing is a powerful pillar and it's something that can't be neglected. And when you include it in your marketing, when you budget for your marketing, when you put some money into it and you're able to diverse that money properly, again, it's just going to greaten your chances of getting all of these things that we generally want from our music releases. And that is to get that music in front of as many people as possible, to have them enjoy it, to have them pay for it, give us their money to buy that, and then also get on our team, so to speak. So, and that means become a part of our community, follow us. So we're building up our community, our fan engagement, our social media. These are all of the things that we tend to want from our music releases. And the fact of the matter is a money investment is just going to do that. And it's going to help you do that a whole lot better and a whole lot more efficient, especially in a lot of ways when you don't have it and you can't compete in these free markets where everybody is there and is just saturated with competition. So again, this is the next big pillar. This is money investment in your marketing. And so what do you do from here with that knowledge now that you've been equipped with this information and you can take this very powerful information. And again, it's stuff that I use in all of my marketing and I have a measured level of success when I was not using these, these sort of principles and doing everything I said that other musicians do like not collaborating and all of that kind of stuff. And I had okay success. But when I start using these pillars, when I start avoiding those three big mistakes, my marketing and my music and the, the impact that I was making skyrocketed. So again, what do you do from here? So the first thing is that you really need to realize that the music industry is sort of fickle. It's ever changing and it's important to stay adaptable. So you adapt to all of the needs and all of the things that the music industry sort of brings to the table and you never stop learning. So like the three pillars and the three mistakes that I'm talking about here now in two or three years, there may be three other mistakes that become larger or these three mistakes people may stop making or, you know, whatever it changes to. You need to be in a position where you keep learning, where you you're studying the market, where you're keeping these things in mind and keeping the, the big things in mind where the team ups is in collaborations is going to be something that always works. The long term process, the pre-release, post-release and the release itself are going to be things that you're always going to concentrate on. So you use these pillars of successful marketing in everything you do and you apply them, but you keep learning because they may adapt and they may change. And then the other thing is that you want to really, really remember this is something that is extremely important. You want to remember that your success is not solely measured by the numbers that you get and the charts of, you know, the success charts and all of that kind of stuff, but it's measured by the impact that your music has on people's lives. That is something that is like, I can't even tell you how important that is. We get so caught up in the numbers. We want the million followers. We want the hundred thousand subscribers. We want all of that. And again, if this is not against that, all of that stuff is great. It really is. It, it opens up a lot of doors. It brings in a lot of opportunities. So it's great. What I'm talking about now, all of that stuff is going to come with that. When you have your music impact people's lives and touch people's lives and bring meaning to their lives, they're going to give you all of that. They're going to give you their time, their money, their resources. The thing I've been repeating all throughout this podcast, they're going to give you all of that. They're going to subscribe to you. They're going to follow you in droves because you're touching their lives. So this is something that you want to ultimately be concentrating on. And you don't want to focus on those numbers, especially initial numbers. You may, when you release a CD or something like that, you may make 10, 15 sales. If you print, you know, physical CDs or something like that, you may sell 20 of them maybe on a good day. And you want, you need to be okay with that because you want to be thinking about the long term process. Okay. I'm selling 20 now, but in six months I may have sold 50 or hundred more. And then I got more people on my team. And then a year from now, when I release another project and I put out another C, my chances are greater because I have more people on my team. So when I do that second release, I sold 20 on the first one. So now in this one, I'm selling 75. 
So you have a trajectory that's going up and you're measuring that by the impact of your music on people's lives. So that's something that's like extremely important to remember. And everything that we've talked about on this podcast has equipped you with that knowledge to market your music. So now it's time to go forth. It's time to create and connect with other people and let your music shine. And I just want to wish you the best of luck on your journey to success. And I know that using these principles that we've talked about in this podcast are going to help you get there faster.